So, as we know, SD1, you know, is really taking off in the industry right now. Uh, there's some pretty impressive growth figures that we've been seeing. Um, but certainly, one, one, of the, um, one of the concerns that a lot of service providers have is that even though they've maybe started to deploy SD1, and maybe some of you here have already started your deployment, maybe some of you are still waiting to get there. But one of the concerns we hear is that maybe you're not seeing the growth figures that you'd expect. So everybody hears, you know, SD1 is growing fast. Um, Chris put up some great slides before. Um, that showed you those growths. And, and the reason is is because, you know, enterprises have different choices. They can get the service from service providers, but they can get it from many other providers as well. They can do it themselves. So what I want to focus on in this presentation is really, you know, how can you get more value for your SD1 service? Uh, because by getting more value, you can actually start to differentiate. And if you can differentiate, hopefully you can start to grow that market share. So to begin with, what's a typical SD1 service today? Um, so it's mostly around connectivity. Um, it's typically augmented with MPLS. It allows you to get really fast connectivity of your new branch offices. Um, you can back up your services. You don't have to change your infrastructure. So there's a lot of really good advantages and reasons why you want to get to market with SD1. And the business value for the enterprise customers is actually, you know, is there. The, the, but it has some limitations. A lot of the solutions that are put in today are what we call more point solutions. They're sort of vertical stack from a single vendor, which is actually great to get started because you need to, you know, as we've spoken over the last few days, we don't want to wait till everything's ready before you get into the market. So starting with these solutions is great, but the problem is often how do I evolve? How do I add new services to this? Um, how do I scale it? Um, and back to the differentiation question. If, if you're basically working with um, an SD1 vendor that has a portal um, providing you know, different capabilities of the service, then the chances are your competitors have also got that same portal. So they're seeing the same thing. So how do you differentiate your offer based on that? So that's one of the problems we find. So, so basically, how do we improve on that? Well, I think we've talked about this for some years. Um, we want to be able to add more value-added services to the offer. Uh, those value-added services can be security applications, they can be bandwidth on demand, they can be you know, web optimization. There's lots of different types of services you can offer. But why stop at network services? You know, you've also got cloud applications. You're going into the enterprise. Why not offer them Microsoft Office 365? Why not offer them Google Works? Why not offer them cloud unified comms? There's, there's a whole range of services that you can bundle in with this. And also, you know, the customer, or the end customer often says, I want to be in control of my services more. I want to be the one that sort of chooses the services, makes changes and modifications in a simple way. So I'm sure that's a, an, another request you get often. So, so that's where you want to be. And, and I think we've been talking about that for some time. So I want to spend the rest of the presentation really talking about, well, the how. What are some of the challenges that you find and how can you evolve from where you are today to that new solution? So first of all, um, has anybody here you know, deployed SD1? OK, that's brilliant. So if you've deployed SD1, have you deployed anything else on top of SD1? OK, well, there you go. Perfect examples. <laughs> so so, so and, and the reason is that it's, it's not easy. It introduces some challenges. So if we go through a few of them, one of them we start with is actually from a brand perspective. So, if you today have an SD1 vendor, you'll have a portal where you, you're, uh, you're able to, uh, your enterprise customer is able to view and configure that service. So you want to add a virtual firewall, but you want to choose another vendor um, or another VNF, but from another vendor. So all of a sudden, it becomes difficult because you're likely to not integrate that VNF into that vent first vendor's portal because it's not really, their, you know, not really their job to do that. So you'll end up with lots of vertical portals. It's just complicated and, and it spoils the brand. So rather than the enterprise customer seeing your brand as a service provider, they're starting to see a lot of different vendor brands and you can actually get cut out the loop. So one of the concerns we hear is, is the sort of dilution of the brand as you add services and, and how, you, um, you know, how you can overcome that. The second is how do you manage real-time services? 
Um, so again, this becomes an issue because um, a lot of the point solutions that are put in place today maybe have a very thin orchestration layer, but again, they probably are not able to bring in third-party VNFs into that orchestration layer. And then if we go back to the legacy OSS environment, that can't even cope with real-time services. It wasn't designed for that. So whilst you can activate your service, you can, you can provision it, you can't, be able, you can't do the lifecycle management of those VNFs. You, you can't do all the things and the advantages that you expect you know, in a virtualized environment. So that's the second issue. The third issue, how do you minimize IT integration? Now, you can't stop IT integration. IT integration's got to happen. You've got to be able to bill for your services, for example. So the key is how do you minimize it? Because you're adding more services. And each of those services you want to have linking back to your IT infrastructure in terms of inventory, in terms of billing, in terms of catalogs. So again, how do you minimize that so that adding a new service doesn't suddenly increase in complexity and, and cost of, of what you need to do? How do you offer cloud IT apps? We talked earlier about expanding the scope of services beyond VNFs. And even though VNF onboarding is still a little bit challenging, it's complex, we haven't standardized all of this yet, at least there's a, there's a process for that onboarding. Um, and we heard earlier about the presentation about license management and uh, you know, how to deal with the license management, which we're definitely getting to solve. But how do you deal with the cloud IT apps? You know, if, you, if you're dealing with Microsoft, if you're dealing with Amazon, how do you deal with their licensing scheme? How do you bring it into your systems? Again, you don't want to do a hefty integration or upgrade of your, some of your business processes that are not designed to handle these cloud applications. And then lastly, automation, which is you know, obviously a big theme of this event and, and many events in, in uh, SDN and FE right now. The SD-WAN services that are in the market right now, you can do a reasonable, reasonable amount of zero-touch provisioning. Um, so there is a fair degree of automation that's built into those offerings now. But again, when you start adding services on top, how do you keep that automation? Those services also, some will be across physical, some will be across virtual. How do you automate everything on a service level end to end? So these are some of the key challenges that we hear. So I want to talk about now is, is first of all, a couple of uh, new um, capabilities that you'll probably need to bring into your network to solve some of these problems. Just a few, because we obviously haven't got much time today. And then I'd like to talk a bit more about the evolution. You know, what kind of evolution to get from where you are now to, to where you need to be. So the first is the portal. Um, I think it's really important to migrate from this sort of point portal system to a universal portal. Um, a portal that'll have your brand and only your brand. And within that, you can bring in the different offers and services. You'll be able to configure. You'll be able to set policies. You'll be able to drive the topology information. So from this portal, you'll be able to, uh, in a really simple way, I mean, again, this is meant, this is a technical portal. It's not sort of for end users, we'll get to that later, but this is a technical portal, but you still need to make it really, really easy for the engineers that use it to be able to get everything they want from this, including a complete end-to-end -end view of the service, all the analytics, um, all the stats from the service on an end-to-end -end basis. And this will help with the brand too, because again, you're not sort of pointing to different places to configure different services. You go into one single place where you can get everything done. So that's one thing. The next is service orchestration. Now, service orchestration has a few critical roles. I mean, ultimately, this is a new process. This is, or let's say it's a new function. This isn't an evolution of, of the legacy OSS. This is a new function that's needed to take care of real-time services, but also hybrid services. So you can manage and automate uh, services across, uh, uh, across physical and virtual networks. So the key with service orchestration is it becomes like the glue it, it, between everything. So now it has a view across everything. It connects to your SDN, it connects to your orchestrate, uh, network orchestrators, to the public clouds, to the legacy network. So it's the glue that fits everything together. And basically, when a service comes in, it'll get decomposed, and it'll tell the various subcomponents what to do. So the, it'll go to the mano and say, you know, sort of instantiate a VNF. It'll go to the controller and say, hey, you know, I need some network connectivity. So it'll decompose that service and tell all the constituent parts what it needs to do. What's really important with service orchestration, we call it needs to be model-based. 
And that basically means you, you've heard, I'm sure, in some presentations about a service design environment that allows you to uh, onboard VNFs, create services, uh, design those services, and then you basically simulate how they would run in a real environment. And this absolutely saves you a massive amount of time in terms of when you put it in the real world of minimizing those errors and failures. So you can go into a service design environment, come out with a really good script about how, a model about how that service works, and populate that into your catalog of your orchestrator. And it deals with real-time services. So for your firewalls and your WAN optimization engines and everything else that you want to optimize within a data center, across data centers, even down to the CPE itself, the, the resources can be anywhere then again, it helps you to manage those, the full life cycle of those in real time. And the key is the simplification with IT, because now you haven't got all these systems trying to integrate directly with the IT environment. You've got a single system that integrates with IT, and the others it uses all completely open APIs, whether it's MEF APIs or uh, TMF APIs, whichever your preference, it'll integrate with all the other subsystems in, in the completely open API environment. And then another component that uh, you may want to evolve to is what we call the marketplace. It's kind of like a evolution of the self-service portal, if you like. And this can be really key when you want to broaden your ecosystem. You're not just talking with a few vendors anymore or VNF vendors anymore. You really do want to look at adding in those cloud applications or unified comms applications. So you're going to have a much broader ecosystem of partners. So this is what we call um, a marketplace that is like a nice, really front, you know, it's an e-commerce front-end system that makes it very easy for people to uh, purchase offers from. You can actually define, uh, you know, marketing promotions from this place and have them up and running immediately. And the benefit here is, is also for your sales force who, if you sell SD-WAN today, you probably have a direct sales force that goes to those really big, large enterprise customers. But if you're trying to expand and going into the SME market, then that can be pretty complex to do with the sales teams you've got. So this becomes like a self-sufficient environment where those SMEs can actually use this portal to get everything they need from ordering, purchasing, monitoring, whatever they need to do can be done from, from this sort of storefront environment linked to all these back-end uh, back processes. And these back-end processes are just modules. This isn't, again, no big OS, uh, BSS upgrade is needed to have these modules. These are just specific processes needed just for the things that you need that are independent from, say, your legacy network right now. So one thing I'd like to spend a few minutes from then. So there are a few, few, um, few things that, that, uh, that you can add in to start evolving services. But often um, customers ask us, but how do I get started and how do you go from A to B? And, you know, I, I don't really know which exactly VNFs I'll need because I have to change, you know, in terms of what the market requires. So there's a lot of flexibility. So one thing we say, well, first of all, you need to know have what your end state in. E even if you haven't deployed SD-WAN yet, you, you, it's good to have an idea of where you want to be. You don't need to know which VNFs, which partners, which this, which that. But it's good to have an idea of, of, of you know, the different steps you're going to take and where you think your, your target state is going to be. And then what you need to do is plan out a workflow, a workflow that is flexible so that you can make choices and at every stage you can you know, make different choices if you like. And you need a platform that's flexible enough to cater with these choices at every stage. So this kind of fancy spirally diagram is, is trying to represent that because for example, a few of you already said you've made the first choice, you've deployed SD-WAN, okay? You could have started in a different place. Some operators have started with an orchestration platform for any service. We, we haven't deployed any services yet, but we're going to get our infrastructure and our orchestration in place, and then we'll board the services on. Others, like yourselves, have put SD-WAN in first. We want to get this service up and running, and then we'll worry about how we integrate it with the rest of the network later on. So you've made that decision on SD-WAN. But then maybe one of the problems you have is you, you know, it, it is hard to sell. Your sales teams are finding it hard to sell. The user interface is not good. It's not differentiating from any offer that's out there. So what you might decide to do, you've got several choices, but you might say, okay, my next step is to add a self-service portal, just that module. You don't need a big platform. You don't need a big several systems. You may just need this self-service portal. You want to be able to add that to your network in the simplest way. 
And that means you can improve the customer experience. You can hopefully the sales teams will have a much easier time being able to sell this and the different advantages you've got. But then it could be that you're not getting any visibility with the rest of your network. You might be having some you know, problems in terms of uh, integration with billing, integration inventory. You may be having these sort of, you want to bring your SD solution a bit more in line with the rest of your network. So maybe that's when you could say it's time to put in this service orchestration engine. Again, just a single process. It's, it's not you know, adding all the other pieces that you may need. And you go on and on and on this way. Another decision could be it's hard to get into the SMB market. I want to expand. So you might say, OK, now's the time to add a digital marketplace. So the point here is that at every step of the way, you make choices. You might change. You need to be able to change and react to different dynamics. But you need to be able to add the pieces into the network that you need that suit your purpose. So that's the key point. So I want to really stress that on the next slide is that you know, you, you, the whole point with SD-WAN in evolving to new services, you are going to have to bring some new operations and business processes into play. You absolutely need them to be able to the, deliver the experiences that you need. You don't want to evolve the legacy base. You know that that's difficult and a, a lot of the legacy wasn't built for the new types of services. So yes, you have to integrate with it. But what you want to do is over time, you'll start diminishing some of the legacy you've got and you'll start building these new functions. These new functions need to coexist across physical and virtual. For example, configuration manager. Why have a configuration manager just for virtual? You want it to deal with a physical network and start to automate aspects of that too. So in building these new OSS and BSS processes on the right hand side, you're building a new stack. You're building a new stack of components that can be plugged into your network only as and when you need them. You don't need the full thing, it's not a big product. You pick the processes that are going to work for your business and you add them on. So you end up with a very gradual transformation that makes sense based and it's driven by the particular business needs that you've got at that time and is flex enough to move around as the market dictates. And then one last point here on, again, reducing IT, it relates to agile and DevOps environment as well. And there's two aspects to this. So the first is one I mentioned earlier. It's the upfront, what we call agile service design. You know, we can't stress how important it is having this environment in place that is separate from your real-time orchestration and runtime environment. Having an offline service design where you do your onboarding, you validate, you test your services out, all theoretically will absolutely save you an awful lot of time uh, once you get these services into your real environment, you've already minimized many of the problems you'll have. So again, in terms of being able to get services to market much faster, this uh, agile service design that works hand in hand with your orchestration environment and feeds information back but is offline is, is a really key tool. And then second is the DevOps. Um, you know, we've talked about this for many years. I don't know if some of you have already started to transition your organizations that way. It is painful. We've, we've been through it with several customers, but it's worthwhile. Uh, once you get those teams working together differently and you define very short life cycles for you know, the software that you've got, very, or, or small chunks of software, if you like, that you're going to push out into your, you know, into your system as opposed to big releases. Once you move and once you get the organization behind that, it's, uh, it's incredible how much time it saves overall. So it's, it's, it's painful, but it's worth the effort. And a final point here, I mean, some of you may be, all of this may still be too much. You know, all of it, you might want to get into the SD-WAN market. You may not have even entered into any virtualized services yet. You, you know, it may be that you don't have the, the skill set and the company built up yet or, or, or even, the, um, even the budget to do certain things. So the other point I'd, I'd make here is that uh, you, know, you can also get started with a cloud-based model. Um, there's cloud-based offerings. Netcracker offers cloud-based offerings where uh, from, you know, you basically will um, provide the service directly to your end customers, but it's all completely branded uh, by you as a service provider. So all these tool sets and all these capabilities are in, uh, in our data centers. So that's another option to get to market quickly um, and you know, start to understand and, and start to be able to position these services in the market and understand how you can add value on top. So just to, oh, went the wrong way. So just to finish, 
Um, so a few key points to, to, to really move forward with SD1, just consider, you know, move to, you know, this integrated self-service portal. So you, 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 you don't have these uh, different portals from different vendors. Position orchestration when you're ready, when you want to solve certain problems related to the, you know, adding new, new, um, adding new services or scaling services. Um, when you're ready to broaden your offerings out into a much higher, uh, you know, larger ecosystem, the digital marketplace will start to add tremendous value to your, uh, to your solutions. And then minimize IT integration, start to uh, build these new, deploy these new operations and business processes gradually as an add-on to your existing environment. Um, and that will really uh, you know, help you get to that sort of new full stack environment much faster. Okay. <laughs> so any questions? Just one? Okay. Yes? Yeah. Hi, um, Nav Chander from Silver Peak. You mentioned the cloud um, offering of SD-WAN. Is that something that NEC Netcracker hosts? Yes. And what, what, so what equipment or what supplier, who's supplying the SD-WAN technology for that? Um, what's in, not sure I'm able to say at this point in a public environment. We can talk later. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we'll, uh, I can tell you about that later. But so yes, it's our own cloud deployment in our own data centers. So you're acting as a service provider then in that case? <laughs> We're acting as a, a cloud provider. We don't offer any service direct to enterprise or we're just offering it to service providers as a sort of white label sell through. Okay, all right, so, that is, so it's not as a direct sell to the enterprise. Okay, thanks. Okay, all right, thank you very much.